It has been international domination with Caesar and Gradden going to victory lane so far this season. Now the question is, will we see another one of those drivers take home the victory today? We head to another Colorado track here today at Pig's Cliff, but these are two much different race tracks, a short oval compared to a super speedway. And we will see if accidents become a factor just like they did in the Amateur Cup Series race. It's another sunny day up here in Colorado, but instead of the mountainous views of Fountain, we're in the metropolitan area of Denver for the 3.72 mile super speedway of Pig's Cliff. This is the Pig's Cliff 400 and you're watching NFR in action on RVN. Hello again everybody, Colin Denton here and welcome to our coverage of the NFRN. Now the Amateur Cup Series race did not bring out a lot of green flag racing, but we did learn a lot about the track. We learned about the safe driving distance for drafting, the trouble spots on the racetrack, a lot of these things that Elite Cup Series drivers can take and apply for today. And if they didn't take anything away from that race, well, I guess they didn't watch our broadcast carefully enough. But there is a lot that can be seen from all of the mistakes and failures that the Amateur Cup Series drivers had just a few moments ago, and this is exactly the place to apply those. This is where anyone that is able to take someone else's mistakes can earn a win by learning from them. So that is exactly what we're going to see out of these 42 race car drivers, veterans and rookies alike. They are going to see what they can do to tame this beast of racetrack that shows a lot of speed and a lot of danger. And as we mentioned before, we're headed just up the road. We're going to the metropolitan area where Pig's Cliff Super Speedway is located, Denver, Colorado. The state capital, just under 700,000 in population. Next name, the Mile High City, thanks to its elevation. And it is home of NASCAR's Furniture Row Racing Team, now currently in the playoffs. And of course, the top 14 drivers in the Amateur Cup Series standings took to the track to see if they could qualify. but. This contact, not once but twice by Chris Harley, sends Donnie Moore into the inside wall. Moore had qualified for both the races so far up to this point, but he's not going to make it this time in a really close battle at the line. And we don't get around when we say that. Alonzo barely edges out Harrison, and the contact with Moore is going to send Harley out of this one by just that margin. Half a car lane behind Justin Roadback. So the drivers we'll see in the field today, Harrison Arvin Alonzo, Robert Harrison, Jack Freeman, Noah Kim, Dwayne Calloway, your Pikes Peak winner, and Justin Roadback. They are all guaranteed a spot in today's race. Chris Harley, the winner from Pigs Cliff in the Amateur Cup Series, is going to be disappointed. But of course, that contact threw him off his pace. And that is just how it turns out on these super speedways. Winning is not always going to give you the result you want the next time. But that is going to conclude our pre-race coverage. We're going to go down track side and get the starting command for today's race. Race fans, it's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command from the upcoming Universal Pictures film, The Fate of the Furious, please welcome today's Grand Marshal, Scott Eastwood. You know what they say, if you ain't first, you're last. So drivers, start your engines! And as the engines get fired, it's time to take you through the starting grid for today's race here at Pig's Cliff. John Arndt in the number 05 Zaxby's Chevrolet will be on the pole for today's race. And to his outside, Rampage in the number 1 NFL Rams Ford. That's his second runner-up spot this season in just three races. Jack Freeman is making his Elite Cup Series debut in the number 13 this race. He'll start in place number three. And Noah Cars, the Thunderhawk Motorsports driver, starts to his outside. Jake Baskinger is looking for his breakout finish here today. Rounds out the top five. Dale Jr. fan 88-83, your Columbia pole winner in place number six. The other JR is coming off his third place run at Pikes Peak. 
Julio Caesar, the Columbia winner, is going to start in place number 8. Robert Harrison made a great run from the back of the Amateur Cup Series standings to 10th place, and now he'll start 9th in his Elite Cup Series debut. And to his outside, Bruno De Barros will round out the top 10. Reese Butcher currently sits 3rd place in standings, and he has a nice 11th place starting spot today. Gerard Oran in that number 91 Subway Toyota will start in place number 12. Amethyst Ashley showed a good track record for Super Speedways with her Columbia run. She'll start in place number 13. And in place 14, the Australian driver of Zachary Fitzwater Sr. Your Amateur Cup Series winner at Pikes Peak, Dwayne Calloway, starts in place number 15. And David Davidson, last week's pole winner, is starting in place 16. Brad Stover is coming off his fourth place run at Pikes Peak and starts in place number 17. On the outside of row 9, Adam Mundinger is looking to make his way back into the top 5 in points. In row number 10, Johnny Gardner with Gardner Racing is in place number 19. And rounding out the top 20 is Eric Monaco. So that's how the field's going to look for today's race. We're going to see how they're able to handle the draft and the high speeds. I believe we said last broadcast that they were going about 250. Might be a little high on my prediction. Just based on not seeing them in a huge pack. They might be going around the 240 mark, which is what we saw in practice. Not sure if any of those were my qualifying runs, though. But in these big drafts, they definitely hit some high speeds, and it wouldn't be surprising if they were able to hit that 240 mark at some point today. And a lot of accidents took away some green flag racing from the Amateur Cup Series race. We'll see if the veteran presence in this series will help that out just a little bit. We've got three of them up here in the top four. As the pace car pulls off and down behind... The inside wall, Arndt and Rampage take off, the green flag flies, we are live here in Pig's Cliff. Well, a bit of a surprise here. Jack Freeman, it looks like he's going to lead this first lap. An Amateur Cup Series regular, a part-timer in this series, not running for points or the championship, but he makes his way out front after qualifying third. And he had troubles here in the Amateur Cup Series race. Finished 35th. If you remember, he was the one that ran up on the hill near Pitt Road, which is right about where they are right now. And almost and gave everyone a scare that he was about to go over and who knows where he might have fallen, but he was lucky to get caught on the curb. They determined it was a steering problem and a stuck throttle, a medley of problems for the 13 car, who it just seemed like he had some bent in hood after he hit one of the drivers, I believe it was Kyle Law. But his car obviously did not work out the way it wanted to. After that contact with a bunch of cars spinning on the pit ropes, it's going to be one of those things you got to watch out for as we watch these guys go. And there's a spinner in the back that is Jack Porkins. It's a single car incident, but there was some help right there. There is no caution. We stay green. Porkins is definitely not getting off to the start he wants. He's very disappointed in, in his results. And he's watching both of his teammates run in the top 10 in the standings. He finished 37th at Columbia, wrecked out. Pikes Peak was a another mediocre 26th place run. Now he's at the back of the field. After being spun out, we'll have to check back on who that was. And I believe that I was the 14 of Justin Roadback who made his way in on qualifying. Now Noah Ponser comes around. 
I think maybe he had a part in that one as well. And there's a big accident in the front stretch. Multiple cars around, and there's more of the RPG-7 Motorsports as the other JR hits the wall on the inside. Brad, I believe, was a part of that as well. I see Ryan Maiden around, as well as William Brock, Gerard Ron, Stephen Willey right there, Robert Harrison. Jack Porkins flies, but he might have gotten lucky by, by spinning around and missing most of that, I would guess. The other JR stuck on the apron. That's one of Porkins' teammates. Jet Cross is... Bent in really hard. Cody Hagen as well. You can see the front end damage on his machine. Stephen Willie, we mentioned his name. Also a victim of this large accident on the front stretch where we saw the incident with Porkins and William Brock made contact with him and Jonathan Reigns is also going to spin. And a bit of more contact there with Eric Monaco to the back of Willie and and Brock leaves it up onto the banking and now he's stuck there. There's the little bit of damage that Monaco took from the from that minor contact with Willie, but I don't know where Brock was going. He came in there really hot and made that contact with with the 62 car. So now we're watching, this is Amethyst Ashley. I believe that she was actually the only one that crossed the line before the caution came out. And so I, I think she has a big gap. And now as she comes down the pit road, it should be pretty obvious that she uh, gets the lead on the other end. We saw Tyler Markell right there, might have had a piece of it as well. So here is Ashley on pit road. It's going to be a two-tire left or right side stop rather because we've got the pit road wall and the crews on that side surprised she didn't go for four tires there she would have had the time given all these cars are so far back but maybe she felt fine with the tires she had on the left side and maybe those were giving her a little bit of extra speed sometimes the scuffed tires can work out in your advantage but can't say exactly what that crew was thinking there Stuart Gradden pulls off the pit road. Looks like a two-star tire shot for him. Johnny Gardner with some heavy right side damage, as you can see. Crews are trying to buff that out. And they're not making great progress. Reese Butcher is in. Feels like he's a little bit slow on the get, get out. Not sure he doesn't... He, Seems like they're having some fuel tank problems. It's not filling up quite as he wants it. But now he will pull off. And there's a big contact right there. It's Johnny Gardner. He finally got off hit road. But then it resulted in some major contact with Butcher. Alonzo also a part of that, I believe. As we look off on the race off pit road, it's a lot of green there. Which means that some guys had to drop back in that. So a mess of... Cars everywhere, and this is what happened to bring us where we are. Johnny Gardner got into the rear quarter panel of Robert Harrison and turned him way down the racetrack. And Amethyst Ashley, you can see, is very lucky to get through, through that one. Harrison's going to hit opposite side door first on the inside wall. Cesaro is around at this point. Shepard's moving up the racetrack. Gardner is around. And there's where the caution flag flies. So that's why the 57 got around. And there's some more spinning in the back there's a there's a lot happening here it's almost impossible to differentiate anything okay so the other jr actually came down the from the outside wall hit jack freeman there's where stewart Graden gets involved as well so that's all three rpg7 motorsports drivers and a issue on these first few laps ryan maiden mitchell mark are both around william brock sideways at the moment I'm glad some of these drivers got checked up the way that they did. Seems like Mundinger might have taken a little bit of damage. I think Smith maybe got in the back of Alonzo. 
and there's more incident for him, and Ponser gets a piece of it. Monaco's just kind of squeezing through there. Number three's in there as well. I believe that's Noah Kim. I think this will tell us a little bit more about what we saw in the back of the field. The McDonald's drivers are making contact here, and they go really wide. And then the nine gets into 12. And you know what? There was actually a controversy between them at Columbia. Fitzwater was upset with DeBarros about him driving up the racetrack, causing the accident, the, or the original accident, that got Fitzwater out of the race. And so it looks like that's where that originated, even though it seems like both of them got going back straight. And a lot of cars went around as a result, and that includes Markel, Monaco, and Oran, Kim, all in the back. 78 of Philip Fry is also involved. And of course, the drivers up here that we saw originally. We're riding on board the number 98 car. We'll see what he saw. And just the slightest bit of contact caused that one to go through. And then, okay, he made some contact again as he sped up and hit the... Hit the 18 of Nick Smith and got himself trapped on the apron. So that's why he got stuck there and spun around past the large Goodyear tire. And finally, we'll watch Gerard Oran. Oh, he heavy, nearly head-on impact. And it looks like he gets it driving again until he hits the 41 of Caleb Campbell. And that car is killed. We'll be right back with more NFR and racing action. Okay, next up is item CRB218634, a 1992 Chevrolet Astro van fuel injector spider. Spider? Yeah, see how it's got these legs sticking out from it? Like a spider. <laughs> yeah, but it only has six of them. So? Well, that makes it an insect, not a spider. Uh, my cue card says spider. I'm just saying six legs makes it an insect, you know, like a fly. It'd have to have eight to be an arachnid. Arachnid? I thought they had pouches. No, that's marsupial. Welcome back to Pig's Cliff Super Speedway. Ryan Maiden, Johnny Gardner, David Davidson, Cody Hagen, Stephen Willey, Gerardo Ron, Philip Fry, and Eric Monaco all out of this race as a result of our first caution of the day. It was a big, wild front stretch incident. And now we have Amethyst Ashley out in front. The other JR stays on the racetrack, but he is not on the lead lap so he stays on the inside line and of course he has a little bit of damage we'll see if that ends up slowing anyone down but there might be a lot of cars slowed down based on just the tiniest bit of contact added on with the variable of having a su super speedway and fast speeds are going to be very aerodynamically important but green flag returns on lap number nine and ashley gets off to a good jump Seems like we can't really say the same for the seven of Aiden Shepard. He was a big storyline leading up to this race. If you notice, he's got a new paint scheme on the car. Pepsi Co. bought out the contract of Coca-Cola Company who had Powerade on the car. Shepard coming off back-to-back -back top 10 finishes, including a top five at Columbia. And no comment from either of the two companies that were involved in this transaction, but it is a full buyout of the contract for the number seven car and their sponsorship. So Pepsi Max on the car for the rest of the season full time and Coca-Cola go in a different direction in their sports marketing. That's what we're hearing from sources. And with this Ashley from the lead coming down the pit road, did not see that one on our screen. It's going to take a few tires and she'll be on her way. And there's contact and a spin that's going to bring out the caution. Caleb Campbell, another front stretch incident. And he's got damage everywhere on the race car. Rambo, the other car involved, and he has 
a smoking engine. So the caution back out again. We have a race back to the line. No, a car is really set it wide and it's going to make it three wide in the race back for the lead. His teammate just wrecked out and might be out of the race now, but Cars is going to take the lead as they come to the caution flag. You can just tell what the differential is between the speeds of these drivers because we already saw about four packs created just from that short bit of green flag action that we had. Now let's see what they do on pit strategy. It looks like Noah Cars is going to stay out and some guys came down really fast and that is going to turn around the 55 of Brad Stover. Did not catch who exactly hit him right there, but it does affect how he comes down the pit road and that is going to also mean some extra damage repair work for him when he gets back to his stall. As we look back, it might have been the 13 of Jack Freeman that made that contact. If we watch Eli Bright, they go to left side tires. I believe right sides were the majority pick for these drivers when they came down for the first time. And Eli Bright comes on and big contact with Robert Harrison, making his Elite Cup Series debut. Another JR comes in. Dale Jr. Fan 88-83 pulls off. Not so much extra contact now. As we see, it was pretty stagnant on the movement in this pit stop, but it looks like there's contact between Rambo and Mundinger, and that shoots the four into the outside wall. Heavy contact. Caleb Campbell was the unfortunate victim of that one just based on where he was running. We caught it up live, but we know that no one else will be involved after that. Even though there's some close calls right there. Tyler Markellis is kind of lucky right there. He came within a few feet, if not inches, of striking the back of the 41. As we ride on board, Mundinger. Oh, man, he got he got a little squeeze. I think the 41 came down just a touch. And he's going to escape from this one. We'll be right back with more NFR and racing action here at Picks Clip. Fan mail for Denny Hamlin just keeps rolling in. Mitch Gordon from Albany, New York writes, Hey FedEx, I heard that when Denny isn't racing, he volunteers at a retirement home. Well, Mitch. Come on, Marty. Is that all you got? Did you see Marty bump me? Welcome back to the NFR and Elite Cup Series here at Pigs Cliff. This is just a few moments ago. The top three, Noah Cars, John Arndt, Stuart Gradden, come down pit road. And they get their service late. Catching up back live, we have three cars that dropped out of the race. Rambo and Caleb Campbell, of course, but Robert Harrison after the contact on pit road. Also now out, and that is the end of his Elite Cup Series debut. Several cars have gone down at least one lap. I'm not sure when that occurred. We saw the Amateur Cup Series race kind of have the same effect. Several guys three laps down without much explanation. Green flags back out on lap number 15. Oh, and Callaway off to a terrible start. The leader now getting passed by Dale Jr. fan 88-83 as Dwayne Callaway off to a terrible start. Your Pikes Peak Amateur Cup Series winner His car has to have a problem, and he is going to take it down the pit road right here. Jack Freeman, Tyler Markell following suit. 
and suddenly it kind of makes more sense why cars aren't and and Graden pitted before the caution was ceased. They didn't want to pit under green. We watch what the Ramco Motorsport drivers make their run, and they both had terrible runs at uh, Pikes Peak, or not necessarily terrible, but quite mediocre for how they have been performing in the past as we ride on board Dominic Carranza. He's going to go past Justin Roback pretty quickly. And we'll see just how much of an effect the draft has on a race car. As we ride on board this 24, you can see Ponta was trying to get a side draft off of Rampage, but he didn't make it work, and Carranza takes heavy advantage of that and gets underneath him and Kim and William Brock. Heavy, heavy hit. Rear end hits the fence, and it's just going to be a single car incident right here, and that is going to bring out the caution once again. Hood's already off the car, heavily damaged. That means he was in one of the wrecks before, and that was the first accident that took place on the front stretch. And now he has another similar incident. This time he's alone on that. John Orange had to take evasive maneuvers as the 23 came down pit road. And we're watching the group come back to the line. And I think Porkins is a lap down, and he might get his lap back, I believe. I believe Carranza is the one we were watching for the the lead. I believe Porkins is going to get his lap back. Kim, however, he shot past Carranza, but he isn't going to get it back, I believe. Don't think the 3 made it past the 24 before the line, but the 04 did. So a lap should be given back to Porkins, while Kim should have to drop back behind Carranza in this line. And now we're going to see a split pit strategy as Rampage is going to be the first one to come in. He came in from second. But then it's going to take some cars further back in the field to make out a uh, whole pit stop cycle. Number one car went from an 11th place finish at Columbia and then slipped back into the 20s at Pikes Peak. And now looking for a solid performance that gets him back-to-back -back runs in the playoffs. Adam Mundinger, one of your rookie contenders. He's had some solid runs so far. And now he's going for right side tires. Pulls off pit lane. And seeing how he can boost his confidence after he had a great run at Columbia. And definitely a not-too-shabby run at Pikes Peak as well. Picks Cliff can be another good run for him as Aiden Shepard gets into Reese Butcher. Now Julio Caesar pulls off. Shepard still pulls off in 10th place. I think Rampage is going to win the race off pit road from the front spot. So here's what we saw Caesar is just behind Brock, and the Xerox, he comes down, hits Jonathan Reigns, and he gets squirrely between him and Brock. And that is why the 23 is going to go around here. So a move by Caesar is going to cause this big hit that puts all four tires off the ground for William Brock. Scary, scary contact right there. And of course, the 23 was going slower than the rest of the field. So the zero felt like he had to make a move to get around it. But Caesar just made the slightest amount of contact with Reigns and rebounded him back into Brock. And all hell broke loose from there. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with more NFRN Elite Cup Series racing action here on RVN. Congratulations, sold to the lady in the back row with the black chapeau. Next up for offer on our docket is item 3106. It's a 3 by 3 inch oil on canvas. Bidding on this highly desirable item begins at $2 million. $2 million, thank you, sir. Come on, that thing's like 3 inches big. 
$2 million. $2.3 million, madam, thank you. $2.5 million. I could buy a house with that amount. Or a yacht. Or a, or a house and a yacht. $2.7 million. A yacht that fits it's in your house. Or like a, like a house yacht. $3 million. Do I have $3 million? Look, that's a joke. Sold to the gentleman in the blue blazer. Enjoy your diminutive painting, sir. I can't believe this. You may not believe that, but you'll believe this. Gillette's new Fusion Pro Glide. Gillette's best shave or your money back. Great, but I just bought a $3 million miniature painting. Regardless of its size, the painting does have a certain existential quality to it. It speaks to the, the isolation of the individual in a sometimes hostile and admittedly unfair world. Hey, do you think they sell hot dogs here? Try new Fusion Pro Glide and become a believer. It's a nice frame. We return to Pig's Clip Super Speedway, anxious to see what is going to happen with the rest of this race. We see that Herzl Arvin Alonso, Aiden Shepard, Noah Cars have all dropped out. Pit road incidents might have been the cause for that. Or possibly mechanical failures. We'll see with the rest of the teams what they have to say about that. And then, of course, William Brock, as a result of his big accident, will drop, drop him out as well. We've got the green flag back out in the air. Jack Krause is actually your leader right now, despite his heavily damaged machine. We'll see if the one car is able to get around him, maybe someone else. And yes, there is Rampage making the cut down below the 34. We'll get by him, eas by him easily because Krause is very much damaged right now. And Rampage is ducking down on the pair road, so he'll immediately relinquish that lead and Krause is following him on the pit road someone else is as well and that's Butcher he pits from the 8th position so now we see that Bruno De Barros is following and drafting Adam Mundinger coming off turn number 5 and now he cuts to the inside and De Barros wants to get the lead for himself and it looks like he's got it Two car breakaway out the front and a big pack right behind them. Stuart Bryden leads that one. Your last week's winner at Pikes Peak and now has the points lead as a result. Currently running in the third position. You can better know him as the Blue Bullet as he's put up back to back top fives. Third place at Columbia, the win at Pikes Peak. Now he's running third again. A lot of speed inside that number 29 machine. As we keep watching him, it looks like he might try to make a move on Adam Mundinger and pounce. Julio Caesar, your winner at Columbia, currently second in the points to Graden. And he's not having a bad run at all. He's running in sixth position. It's definitely a respectable run and potentially one that he can still battle to get the win here today, make himself a two-time winner. The pit strategy is all over the place right now. We do not know when we'll see these guys make their moves. They could try to sneak away from the other, from the rest of the group. They might try to stay within them. We we'll just have, just have to see. Seventy-six pull winner from Columbia goes way high. Jonathan Reigns tries to make the advantage work, but now as they come around with the inside line on the left, that is going to favor the 76 car. And Dale Jr. fan 83 with a big, big draft, and here he comes to the inside. DeBarros got a lap led, but now he's going to have to hand over the torch. As we see, some of the cars have gotten back up to each other. We've got a bigger six or seven car pack happening up here. We watch on board the 76. They are catching up to Jet Krause, who came back off pit road. But we will see the 76 pull down on the pit road right here. do wonder if this has 
anything to do with gas as they did have to take several laps before they got finally up to pace. Nick Smith did not come down. He stays out from the ninth position and now he will run the inside and see what he can do to try to gain time while everyone else is pitting. He's currently 16th in the points, which is solid but not good enough for these drivers that really need to get into the playoffs. A win is going to do it automatically, but points is always a necessity if you don't have that luxury. We watch Jonathan Reigns pull off of his stall. Driver number 77, Checkmate Motorsports car. Oh, there's contact back there. That was Bruno De Barros who just came back and grabbed the lead for a second. He led the uh, previous lap. The 84 car is going to have some damage once again. So we watch this front pack right now. It looks like Dominic Carranz is going to be the one that gets out in front. I think we're still trying to figure out if Nick Smith pitted from the top spot, but Carranza is leading this group at the moment. He's got two top 10 finishes back to back, and that is good for the driver of that number 24 out of California. He's looking to see what he can perform so that he is contender for the championship. As you can see, onboard Ashley she is trying to make her, her move up toward the 24, use the number 9, going a bit slow to catch up. And as the leaderboard cycles back through, yes, Smith did pit on that previous lap, and now Carranza is the new leader. And Ashley catching up really quickly. And wow! As Mundinger comes down for a pit stop, Carranza got held up. Quite a lot, and Ashley makes a huge breakaway right there. So now Ashley all, all alone out front, and I believe she's made that move more than once before. Columbia is coming to mind. She had a, she had a great run to the inside of a car coming off the pit road. And in that case, it was a car coming onto it. But that lead is not going to last as... Now Brad Stover makes the move underneath 24, makes it three wide, and now it's going to take second place, try to catch up. He has a fourth place finish from Pikes Peak to lean back on. Didn't ha quite have the same luck at Columbia, but now he's looking for his first victory as we approach the end of this race. Oh, but we see that they're coming down for pit stops, and there's a little bit of contact between Stover and Ashley. Not sure if it was necessary, not sure if it was an in intentional move, but we see the top three at the moment. They're coming down for pit stops. Carranza has the second to last stall, which means he'll be the first to get in there, and it looks like he's going for the left side tires. Rampage pits from fourth place which means Jonathan Reigns is going to be the one that takes the lead. Number 77 car, Checkmate Motorsports. Has a terrible start to this season, 25th at Columbia, 41st at uh, Pikes Peak, and that makes him one of just a couple of drivers that have not finished on the lead lap for either of the races and now trying to see if he can break that streak now but we'll see that Gradden makes the move to the inside and now he'll take the lead six laps to go here at Pig's Cliff and Dale Jr. fan 8883 pulls to the inside as he looks to get out and win a race he had the pull at Columbia, and a lot went wrong that race after pit road contact. But if Gradden is able to pull this one off, that makes him a two-time winner back-to-back -back weeks. 
It's going to be big for bonus points. It also means that an at-large spot is going to be open in the playoffs. Oh, but there's a holdup as Jonathan Reigns makes the huge move to the inside of Eli Bright, who holds up Gradden and Jail Jr. Fan 88-83. So now it's Reigns out in front. Five laps to go. I think the big question is, who's going to be the one that needs to make a pit stop? Not so confident that these guys are all going to be free on their gas. We're looking back. This is second pack, and there's Ashley. She's running now in the fifth position, and there's big contact. Huge, huge hit into the inside wall. Caesar and Smith struck a corner. Carranza gets contact with Smith and spins around. And now the 98. He goes over. Huge, huge wreck at the end of this one. And the 0 and the 18 hit the inside wall into a corner. Terrible, terrible contact. We see the Zero is still driving somehow. After he made contact with that wall at 230 miles per hour. Noah Ponser hit in late. I cannot believe what I've just seen. And the 76 is going to beat the 77 back to the line. And that is crucial. We are so close to the end of this race that it could be... Ending under caution. Now the question is, are they going to have enough gas? Or do they have to pit right here because they are not going to make it? Getting ra radio communications, they are going to have to pit. They are not going to be able to coast it. The 76 pulls down, so does the 77. They try to go around the number 0 car. This car is not even smoking anymore. It's like it just lost all power from now on. Who else is coming down? I believe that's the 13. And we're seeing it looks like Ashley might be the new leader. We saw a lot of this group come down a couple laps prior to this accident. But if Ashley has the gas to make it stick, she might be able to win her first career Elite Cup Series race. Now we got to go back and watch this one. If you ask me, it looks like Caesar's going up the racetrack. I don't know what he's thinking right there. Maybe he thinks that he has the room to tuck in behind the 18 and try to get some drafting help alongside with Jack Porkins. But the 18 is headed and this is the absolute worst angle in this track to actually hit. Watch this. Boom. And Caesar actually knocks the 18's driver's side door as he himself hits his driver's side door against that say that wall. But Nick Smith hit it head on and sends the 18 car flying and flipping. We have seen some terrible accidents in this series before, but full speed. Did you just see that? That happened so suddenly. And just to add insult to injury, Carranza comes along Trying to avoid it, but he just can't because it was just so quick when Smith came down the racetrack and the 24 is going to make contact. And we are hearing the 18 car driver's Nick Smith has climbed out from his race car. That is absolutely amazing. 
Julio Caesar brought it back to pit road. He is okay as well, but they'll both be taken to the infield care center. The other JR came along, and Carranza spinning the way that he was. He gets collected, and Ponser hits him in the driver's side door and sends him flipping. 64 is trying to make his way around. He's, he's at least lapped down, I believe, and I'm pretty sure the 98 was as well. He was at least lapped down from earlier in the race when he got stuck on the banking. Some of these guys are at this point are just fighting for positions among each other, even if they're laps down. Fortunately, the 98 will land on all four tires. And now for an insane onboard watch with the number zero of Julio Caesar. And now on board Nick Smith. That is definitely going down in one of the most terrifying accidents in the series and league's history. And miraculously, we see that all drivers are able to get out safe. But we are in fact going to end this one under caution. The lights are still on on the pace car. We've already taken the white flag. And behind a couple of lapped cars, Amethyst Ashley has the gas and she's going to make it stick. It is going to be her race here today. Amethyst Ashley from out of Texas wins at Pig's Cliff. What a great run for Amethyst Ashley. Sometimes you just got to be the first one to cross the line, even if it means under caution. It's a great race for her and her sponsor, Denver Doll Emporium, which is essentially local here in Denver, Colorado. They wanted to be on the car at Pikes Peak, but you know what? They'll take the the race here winning in Denver compared to Tabasco having the race down at Pikes Peak. And also, we have to mention the fact how amazing it is that we have a Texas native winning here today given the events recently of Hurricane Harvey affecting the southeastern part of the state. To have a Texas native like Ashley here winning the race today is just fantastic. So the NFR and officials are actually looking over the official results and trying to form formulate that for everyone's viewing. So we're going to head to a quick commercial break and then we'll come back and have the results for you. Car's really running good today. We're really looking forward to the race. Can you wait a minute, please? Yeah. Cut. I think this is the right call, Brad. Well, I could use a little bit more torque up off the corner. Yeah, it should give you more. Catch the buzz. Feel the sting. Get YJ Stinger Extreme Energy Drink in four amazing flavors, including the new Chronic Cola. Now available with zero carbs and sugar free. Back here at Pig's Cliff Super Speedway, the results have been tallied. Of course, Amethyst Ashley is your winner for today's race. Brad Stover is going to come home with a runner up finish, but that will be a new career best for him. Jack Freeman, making his career debut in the Elite Cup Series, qualifies third and finishes third. A great run for him. The Blue Bullet, Stuart Gradden, finishing in fourth place. Another top five run here today. And believe it or not, that is his worst finishing effort of the season. So he's going to have to pick it up a little bit. The number one car of Rampage will round out the top five. And only seven cars are going to end up on the lead lap as Jonathan Reigns, Dale Jr. Fan 88-83, Jack Krause all going to lap down. As we look further down the results, you can see why we had to go to a commercial. To figure out these results, there's just a lot of DNFs 
lapped cars all the way around. We're not even sure that some of these guys didn't actually DNF rather than just sit on pit road and still get counted, but this is the best that we could figure out. We see a career best for Jack Porkins in 15th place. Reese Butcher third in standings. This might drop him just a tad, but we'll see. 12th place is definitely not something to scoff at. Dominic Carranza was having such a solid run. Finishes in 18th place. Nick Spith led a couple of laps. Finishes 17th. And then we see all of the DNFs start around the 23rd place with the other JR who got collected in that final accident. Aiden Shepard was having great runs. Back-to-back -to -back top 10s and suddenly the new sponsor comes on and he finishes 29th. Just unfortunate for him to be involved with a bunch of contact on pit road. Further down this list, Robert Harrison making his debut in the Elite Cup Series is going to have a disappointing 32nd place finish. Stephen Willey continues to struggle during this season. He has just not gotten the kind of finishes that he wants to get and a DNF in 39th place is putting him far behind the field as a veteran presence. And there's our final two drivers in the results. Philip Fry, Eric Monaco, I believe both got involved in that first accident. As we look at the updated standings, Stuart Gradden will continue to lead with Julio Caesar in second place, 19 points behind. Reese Butcher will maintain third, but Amethyst Ashley, your new winner, will grab fourth place. Brad Stover now up to fifth, 24 points behind Gratton. And looking through the rest of this top 10, it's all guys that you've seen running really consistently and guys we're always talking about because they're always up near the front. So definitely some cars to look at here and realize that this is a strong group that can contend to get into the playoffs even if even if they can't get a win. As we move down to the 11th to 20th place runners, Dwayne Calloway catches my eye, not just because his text is blue on the screen, but he has missed a race, but he's still running 18th place in the standings. That is quite a feat for a driver that is just running part-time, but a winner at Pikes Peak, he shows that he can definitely wheel a car. So he is making his way up the standings, even if he can't contend for a championship. Jack Krause was lucky to come away with a top 10 finish despite being a lap down. And that is a good run for him to make himself comfortable in, into 12th place. Jonathan Reigns made a huge, huge jump today. He went up 14 spots in the standings, now tied with Ryan Maiden at 21st. For Checkmate Motorsports, that's got to be huge considering that Willie is just having a very poor season. Back here are some of the full-timers that really don't want to be in the position that they are. Caleb Campbell, Eric Monaco, Tyler Markell, Rambo, Noah Ponser. All these guys have been involved in multiple accidents, and I'm pretty sure all of them were involved in an accident today. There's got to be a lot more consistency for these guys if they want to make it further and get to the playoffs. And the same goes for these guys, Gerard Ron and Stephen Willey. They also run alongside all of these part-timers that are putting up comparable results. And some of them have run their first race, like Justin Roback, Robert Harrison, Herzog and Alonzo, Noah Kim. They're all just making their first starts, and these guys are among them in three races. That just shows how much these guys need to work toward better finishes. Ashley's big victory today is going to put AMI Incorporated on the top of the team standings chart. That includes the 57 as well as Bruno de Barros in the number 12. They'll move past RPG 7 Motorsports, which includes Grad and the other JR and Porkins. 98 wrecked out in that last accident. Ramco Motorsports will bring up third place. And Callaway Brothers Racing, only one entry in Dwayne, but still kicking far up those standings. And Stuart Grad continues to dominate this Rookie of the Year standings. He has a 20 to 25 point gap on Stover, Caesar, and Ashley. And that's a very solid one for him, but he is definitely going to make sure that he ma maintains his consistent finishes, stays in the top 10 among rookies, and gets all the points that he can. And further on down the line, we have 19 drivers that have 
gotten points at some point this season. Seven drivers, however, have not. So that is going to do it for us here at Pigs Cliff. My name is Colin Denton. Thank you all for tuning in to coverage of the NFRN Elite Cup Series racing action here at Pigs Cliff. We will see you at our next race at Death Valley, California, Mirage Short Oval. This has been a presentation of Rainbow Vortex Network. We will see you all next time.